I would like to talk a little bit about your system, about the system that you put together. I know it's very comprehensive and it has a lot of different styles within the style. I've met several different people who practice there and each of them seems to have a different technique or style that they have developed under you. And I myself, you were my first teacher. And when I was there, I saw so many different styles that were developed. And over the years, I've met people, some people were specializing in one thing, some people were specializing in another. So I go through so many instructors. I count totally about 26 instructors. Okay. Luckily, because of my background, my father's very rich. Okay. My uncle's very famous. My uncle's a four-star general. So in this way, everybody know I'm the nephew of the four-star general. They try to please my uncle. I see. They teach me the best. And also I have, the problem is I cannot stay one uh, area longer. So I traveling some even three months. So in three months, some people teach me the best. He said, I don't teach you form because too long, you don't have the time. I teach theory, philosophy, what's the best, and you got to practice by yourself. I take a note, so I have a lot, a lot of good note. And so I please those instructors help me. So I combine everything together, I call Chinese Kung Fu also. I never call Shaolin. I never call Southern Shaolin. And I never call uh, ground fighting. I never call uh, Chinese wrestling. I never call this Qing Nafa. I call Chinese Kung Fu also. And all of that is in your system. In the system. The wrestling, the Qing Nafa, the grabbing and seizing the stand-up fighting, the fighting on the ground, all of it is in the system. All in the, the system. The weapons. Yes. And, and the healing aspects. Yes, and the healing too. <clears throat> Medicine or herbal <clears throat> or use of the energy help to people. Well, a lot of people don't know about the health benefits of just training in Kung Fu. They think that, you told me one time that it doesn't make any sense to train in Kung Fu for 20 years if all you want to do is fight that there has to be another reason, there should be a deeper reason for it. And a lot of people don't really understand the essence of what it is, why people train that long. You know, you've been training pretty much all your whole life, so there has to be more to it than just learning how to fight. So what benefits do you feel that are in the Kung Fu? The Kung Fu <clears throat> My school, my temple, have a lesson plan. If you go any school, they don't have a lesson plan, means they don't have a good system. My temple, my school have a lesson plan. Have a chapter one to chapter 20. Fighting only about two to three chapter. Fighting is not really important in the Kung Fu Wushu. Hmm. So many students beginning come to my school, come to the temple, they say, Mr. Lee, you don't need teach me how to fight a live. I say, no problem, you go to other school. Fighting on the part of a Kung Fu. How many times you fight? Somebody jump on you, attack you, you defend yourself, you fight. You cannot say go to this on the street, or punch somebody's face, and kick somebody's the body, you cannot do that. Right. So, Kung Fu, somebody attack you, you defend yourself, and then you're fighting. Now, how many times, whole life, how many times you fight, you tell me. Right. But, how many times you're sick? When you're sick, you need to recover. Nowadays, you can go to a drugstore, you can go to hospital, you can see the doctor. But in China, sometimes very difficult to find 
the herbal doctor, very difficult. You have to know the lot knowledge, how about the basic thing, you heal yourself. I see. That's what I say. I talk to the student. I say, you want to be a kung fu fighter? Only a part of it. Okay? What's the principle? My student look at me, they say, what are you training for? I say, I train you became a better person. He said, I'm a better person already. I say, you're a better person, i make you best. <laughs> so in this way, another student, they don't like it, they leave the temple, finally they come back. So it's, it's, so the Kung Fu is for self-development, to be a good person, to be a better person, right. to be the best person right. that and, you can be. And live in the better life. A better person, live in the best of life. That's the principle. Professor Duncan used to say to me that fighting is the lowest form of the martial art, that physical combat was the lowest form of the martial arts. And I think that we live in a time now where people are focusing so much on the violence and they're not focusing on the art, they're not focusing on living well, they're not focusing on being well. And I think that your system and the teachings and the old wisdom that's in the teaching is very important for the time that we live in. And I was just, do you have any tips for people when they're training in terms of their own self-development, what they should look for? Because there are a lot of teachers out there, a lot of schools out there, I'm not putting anybody down, but one of the reasons why I do this is to educate people on what to look for in a good teacher. What attributes do you think that a good teacher should have? The good teachers got to have the good character. For example, I don't want to put some people back. My temple, you don't smell the smoke. No smoking. No smoking. No drinking. And when you're in the temple, you got to be very behave yourself. Respect. Respect the temple, respect each other, respect the teacher, respect the teammate, classmate, and then so make everything harmony. And if you're talking about about the training, the training not just physical, right, mentally, and then spiritual. Okay, we not just do. The physical training, we do the meditation, okay? Like a punching, kicking is a very basic. Right. How you could make your punching, kicking more powerful? You have a practice, a discipline technique. The discipline technique have something behind it. It's a mental, okay? You have to do the meditation. So make it a long story short, okay? Only physical it doesn't last long. Mm. For example, do you see any sportsmen? They don't live longer. That's very true. You see, anything, football, boxing, and then baseball, when to certain age they retire. That's very true. So kung fu men they can practice their whole life. Very true. And I know that you're still very fit and very active and you work every day and you are living you're living what you say and that carries a lot of weight as far as I'm concerned. Well, many people don't believe. Okay, now I face the camera, I face two. They say, Mr. Lee, how old are you? They ask me. I don't ask them directly. I said, I joined Second World War. I calculate how old am I? They, they count the finger, they feel embarrassing. They say, I don't believe it. I said, you better believe it. You want to see my driver license? <laughs> <laughs> well, I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, maybe I can get you again sometime. But I was going to ask you if you might be able to give us, show us a little bit, just maybe a short form or something so that people can get an idea. Okay. How special it is maybe, what you do. Maybe I just let you know I'm too old. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so, thank you so much, Mr. Lee. I really appreciate it. Okay. If not for you, a lot of us would never have been where we are today. So. Okay. I'm glad to let the youngster know <laughs> what the history I go through. Okay. Yes. And then uh, if they want to talk to me anytime, I even retire. I retired in 1990 from teaching, but I still teach the master. I right. teach the degree holder, the master, once per month. I still act. I'm ready when you are. Okay. Open. It's rolling. This we call fighting dancing. Fighting dance. It's not really the form of form. Thank you. Thank you, sir.